Esteban Perez. Thank you everyone uh, for being here on a Saturday morning to learn about the PPP loan. Uh, my name is Esteban again. I'm a business advisor with the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, more specifically the Illinois uh, SBDC or Small Business Development Center, where we help uh, small businesses and Latino owned businesses um, guide through their entrepreneurial process. Uh, we're also joined by Alderman Mike Rodriguez, who uh, thankfully has helped host this event and helped spread the word on this event. Um, so I'll let you take it away and introduce the rest of your folks. Sure. Thanks a lot, Esteban. Um, I just want to congratulate the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. You are such a resource to our community. Um, we know that the first round of PPP loans did not come to our community. They went to other communities disproportionately. So we're doing everything we can. Uh, to resolve that. Uh, hola, soy su servidor, uh, concejal Mike Rodriguez del Distrito 22. Es un placer estar aquí con la organización hispana de, de uh, la Cámara de Comercio de, de, del Estado de Illinois, hispana, o algo así. Disculpa, uh, no sé cómo decirlo bien en español, pero uh, bienvenidos. Sabemos que uh, los préstamos y los grants del gobierno federal en la primera ronda no fue esos, um, de una manera bien a nuestra comunidad. Entonces, esa es la razón que tenemos esta reunión uh, para reclutar y, y urgir más gente a, a aplicar de nuestra comunidad. Before I uh, say a couple more words, I just wanted to thank a couple of elected officials and ask them to speak. Those who helped spread the word on this uh, important event went door knocking, sent emails. So first up, I'll have, uh, I'll introduce our uh, Cook County Commissioner from the 7th District, Alma Anaya. Alma, you're up. Hi everyone, good morning. Uh, this is Cook County Commissioner Alma Anaya. I represent the seventh uh, Cook County District, which is a huge portion of the south uh, west side of Chicago. Um, it has many, many business corridors, including uh, 26th Street. Um, we have all of Archer. We have uh, 47, 51, uh, 51st Street, 55th Street, and then it goes all the way to 63rd uh, Street. So. We, we've been canvassing and, and, you know, one of the, you know, the alderman is very correct when he says, because one of the main things um, that I've been hearing is that a lot of our small businesses, our small, our small Latino businesses, um, we're afraid of, uh, of applying for the PPP grant. So I'm really excited that we're having this um, here because we know our, our small businesses, some of them um, had to close because they didn't have cash flow or they didn't have additional resources. So uh, I hope that you all take as much as you can from this workshop, ask as many questions as you have and make sure that uh, if you have an opportunity and you see that this is the, the program uh, and loan uh, that fits your business needs to take advantage of it. So thank you so much again to all of the wonderful co-sponsors, um, the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Alderman. I know that we had uh, Self-Help, uh, Second Federal Credit Union, um, uh, Leader Hernandez, Congressman Garcia, and Representative Gonzalez, thank you all for partnering up with our office to bring this very valuable information forward. Uh, hola, rápidamente, me llamo Alma Naya, soy la comisionada del séptimo distrito del condado de Cook, el distrito más latino del condado y también el distrito que hay más inmigrantes. Um, y, y este distrito tiene muchísimos, muchísimos negocios pequeños. Tenemos de, desde panaderías hasta, hasta uh, muchísimas otras cosas. Entonces, es muy importante que las personas que están atendiendo este, um, este uh, taller virtual, que sepan que hay recursos para ustedes y que, y que tengan uh, oportunidad de aplicar para estos recursos que a veces uh, ayudan muchísimo a los negocios pequeños, a muchos que han de des desafortuna desafortunadamente no han podido tener el mismo tipo de negocio que tenían antes del COVID. Nos han impactado muchísimo uh, en la pandemia a todos, incluyendo a los negocios pequeños. So, muchísimas gracias a todos los uh, uh, patrocinadores um, de este evento. Muchísimas gracias a ustedes que están atendiendo uh, y, y informándose sobre uh, la importancia de estos programas. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Commissioner. We also have uh, State Representative Edgar Gonzalez. Go ahead, Edgar. 
Hi, everyone. I'm Stein Matter Gonzalez. I'm the state representative of the 21st House District of Illinois. So first of all, thank you to everybody, um, all the participants uh, for joining, and not just the attendees, but also the sponsors. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Adam and I already made the point, so you, so I hate to belabor it. Uh, but, you know, uh, as uh, you know, as I was also doing some canvassing uh, down Archer Avenue, because I also have Archer 26th Street, my, my baby, literally a block away from my house, uh, Cermak, all these uh, different uh, business corridors, you know, um, many, many, uh, many business owners will tell me that either they had heard all about PPP, so they didn't want to, to hear anything else, or they had heard absolutely nothing about it. So seeing that huge dichotomy of, of you know, the average that's already been done, you know, that, that, that does mean that, you know, there's still a lot of work uh, that we need to be doing. Um, so I'm happy that, you know, we're having this webinar, um, even though it's a Saturday morning, um, that people are still interested, um, you know, that, uh, you know, people need it, people need this resource. So I'm glad um, that, you know, we're having this uh, this webinar today, uh, because now more than ever, um, I think, uh, you know, we need to be supporting our small businesses. So thank you again so much to everybody. Hola, buenos días, soy representante estatal Era González del Distrito 21 uno ante Illinois y la, la comisionada del Maná ya le dijo gracias a todos, pero como queda muchas gracias a la Cámara de Comercio y a todos los otros participantes uh, por atender a la vez um, uh, yo represento una área uh, muy latina, uh, es más ayer fui caminando por la calle Archer um, para estar seguros de que todos habían escuchado um, de esta presentación, no más que pues la mitad siempre ya parecían que sabían mucho sobre los préstamos PPP y la otra mitad para nada, entonces yo digo que eso significa que co como quiera hay mucho trabajo que hacer para asegurarnos de que gente en nuestra comunidad, los pequeños negocios sepan los recursos que están disponibles para ellos y así pues como quiera, um, estoy feliz de que esta presentación se está dando aunque sea una mañana en el sábado uh, porque es muy necesario para nuestra comunidad entonces otra vez, muchas gracias y pasen un buen día yeah. Pregunta, as, haga muchas preguntas. Make a lot of questions. Please. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to recognize the Office of Congressman Garcia and the Office of State Representative and Leader uh, Elizabeth Lisa Hernandez for supporting this event and getting the word out. Um, I don't want to take much more time. We do know that um, we need to make sure there are more resources to our community, particularly during this pandemic. We've got positivity rates that are north of 10% and as high as 16, 17% at this point. And just weeks ago, they were in the high 20s in the Southwest side of Chicago. Um, the 60629, the 60632, and the 60623, and the 60638 zip codes are amongst the highest in the state. And we know that that's impacting our businesses and we need to bring as many resources as possible. We've worked hard to cut the red tape here locally uh, to help businesses leverage government to get what they need done. And we wanna do that at the federal level. So I'm honored to be here with the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Self-Help Second Federal Credit Union to bring this resource to the community. I won't take more, more time and I'll hand it back to um, those who are gonna present the content of this endeavor. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right, uh, so I'd like to introduce Jaime De Paolo. Um, our president of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And uh, yeah, please take it away. So good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. It's, it is a pleasure being here. I'd like to thank uh, the leadership of uh, Alderman Michael Rodriguez uh, for my dear La Villita, which is very close to my heart. Uh, also I'd like to the leadership of Representative State Representative Edgar Gonzalez, president, the president of Self-Help Credit Union, Second Federal, uh, Rudy Medina, and, and uh, my dear friend, uh, Commissioner Alma Anaya for, for assisting and helping us do this wonderful webinar. At the end of the day, the, the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is here and is here to help. We will do everything possible to, to inform people and give you access to those funds that you well deserve. So thank you for your leadership. I have an, an, I have an amazing team that we will work on Sundays, we will work at midnight to make sure you get the proper funds to make you, to, to keep your store or business open. So thank you so much. And, uh, 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 and then I'll throw it back to Esteban, which is part of our team. Thank you, Esteban. Thanks, Simon. All right, I'm gonna put you back as a, there we go, thank you. And finally, we have Rudy Medina, uh, my co-host for the evening, mm -hmm. and uh, he will be presenting some information on banking, um, especially at Self-Help Second Credit, uh, Second Federal Credit Union. So if you'd like to make a quick introduction, uh, we can get started. Thank you, Stefan. Also, uh, Rudy Medina, I'm the president for Second Federal. We're a nonprofit credit union. 
Uh, we are uh, headquartered here in Little Village uh, in um, Alderman Rodriguez's uh, uh, ward. And, you know, we've been partnering with, you know, Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for many years, Little Village Chamber of Commerce and other partners. And, um, you know, I don't want to be repetitive to what, you know, Alderman Mike and Alma already said, but, you know, the first round last year was somewhat disastrous for, for communities of color. Um, so, I mean, I think it's important that this call is happening. It's important that people attend. Uh, it's important to get the information and we, you know, we need to keep our communities healthy. We need to keep our business corridors healthy. So, so thank you, uh, everybody who organized this call. Uh, buenos días, me llamo Rolfo Medina, soy el presidente de Second Federal. Somos una cooperativa sin fin de lucro. Eh, estamos, eh, nuestra matriz está aquí en la 26, 26 Pulaski. Uh, estamos aquí para apoyar a todos los uh, negocios latinos y uh, queremos que esto, esta información salga a todos los negocios y por favor tomen ventaja de los programas que vienen del gobierno. Queremos mantener nuestros negocios de nuestras comunidades eh, fuertes y sanas y abiertos. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Well, we can get started. Thank you, everyone, again, for being here on a Saturday morning. So just jumping right into it. I know we don't have a lot of time uh, this morning, so let's make it brief. Um, so Rudy is going to go over our uh, the ability to access PPP and how uh, his bank helps small businesses access that PPP, as well as just beginning the process. And then I'll take it on from there and go into how you can qualify for PPP. What are the uses for PPP? Like what are the different accounts like payroll, utilities, et cetera? Um, and then how to be forgiven and how to maintain that process and maintain yourself in compliance uh, with the forgiveness so that um, you don't have to pay back as much as possible. So we can go ahead and get started with um, access. So Rudy, if you could just walk us through how a small business walks into the bank and gets started. So let me start off by saying that, uh, you know, lessons learned from last year in the first round is uh, the two major roadblocks that most small businesses had was one, uh, a lot of them didn't document their, their employees properly, right? So we had a lot of them come in and had their employees on 1099 or they were paying them cash. And these were legit businesses that, you know, needed the money to survive, but uh, just weren't documenting uh, their staff properly. So I'm gonna let Stevan cover that since he's a subject matter expert in that and that part of it. But the second and probably the biggest roadblock to businesses was access to a banker or a bank or a lender for that matter of uh, whether nonprofit lender, CDFI or any other lender. Um, and, 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 you know, and that was be, for a couple of different reasons. One is uh, SBA was shooting out guidelines and most lenders were trying to figure it out as they were trying to roll it out. And we were rolling it out as we were learning what SBA wanted us to do. And when I mean us, I mean, you know, the community of lenders out there that, that are SBA approved to do PPP loans. Um, so the, the, it was, it was I, I, you know, it was a very stressful time. I, I'll leave it at that. Um, and you know the what we were hearing from our community, like I said, and we were headquartered in Little Village, and we have branches in the Southwest of Chicago, and primarily serve the Latino community. We were hearing that banks were returning phone calls. Uh, that uh, and, and again, I mean, it, it was a busy time, stressful time for everybody. Uh, so, a couple of things, you know, words of advice for this round, uh, you know, going forward is one: if you were a recipient of a PPP loan last year, go, you know. I, Go back to that bank. They already have your file. They already underwrote your file last time. They know your business. It'll be a smooth process. Most banks are already reaching out to their first round of PPP borrowers. So please leverage that relationship. Um, the, um, the other thing I'll say is that get comfortable with technology because most banks are using technology to do this. It's not, you're not sitting in with a loan officer, taking your application, sorting through documents. It's all being done via you know, email. They're sending you a link, you click on it, you fill out an online application. They're, you know, we're expecting, you know, much like the first round last year, that we are gonna have a lot of businesses applying. It's physically impossible for us to sit with every single customer. So we're leveraging technology very, you know, uh, as much as we can. Uh, we did, again, lessons learned throughout the first round, a lot of our businesses in our communities are not comfortable with technology. So they had their granddaughter filling out their application online you know, do whatever it takes, uh, but get comfortable with technology, visit the websites, uh, you know, click on, on the links, fill out your application. Um, 
you know, if you have any questions, visit the resources. You know, we have Esteban who's gonna, who's gonna speak next and the uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, all the Chambers of Commerce for that matter, you know, are great resources. They all, most, most of them have SPDCs housed within them. Uh, they're a great resource. Go to them, talk to them if you don't know where to go. Um, and then for those who did not get a PPP loan last year, for whatever reason, whether you didn't apply or whether uh, you didn't qualify back then, uh, you know, I encourage you to apply. Um, and, you know, again, first steps, if you already have a banking relationship with um, wherever you do your banking, start there. You already have a rapport with them. They already know you. Uh, you have greater odds of being put in front of the line with somebody you already have a, a relationship with. So. Um, I'll stop there, uh, pass it on to Esteban, and if any questions for me, on behalf, I'm, I'm going to stick around and, you know, answer any questions or help Esteban wherever I can, but he is a subject matter expert in this, so. Appreciate it. Thank you. And if I'm missing anything along the way, you could always stop me and fill in, Rudy. No, thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, I see we're getting some questions in the chat already. Um, that's great. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be taking questions throughout the entire presentation and in, in Spanish. Estamos tomando preguntas en español también and, uh, and in English. So we'll be answering questions in both languages at the end of the presentation. But feel free to send in all the questions you have while this is going on so that you, you have it there. So moving on. Qualifying for the PPP, once you arrive at the bank and you have uh, communication with the um, bank representative, you're going to need to know that you apply in the first place. So according to the SBA, a small business is a company with less than 300 employees. Um, I'm sure most of you in the call um, meet this qualification, but it's something important to know. You could also be self-employed, a nonprofit, a corporation, or an independent contractor. All types of businesses can apply. In fact, most businesses can apply. You don't need to be a normal, like, for-profit corporation to do so. As long as you have the information, like payroll information and revenue reduction information available, um, you will be able to apply. So again, have the payroll and financial data. You can use software like uh, Paycore, like whatever payroll software you're using to generate a lot of the reports that um, the SBA or your bank representative are gonna be asking for. You could also use financial data software like QuickBooks, for instance, to manage your bookkeeping. And that will also create a lot of the reports that um, a lot of the uh, bank representatives or the SBA will be asking for. Like Rudy said before, it's really, really important that we start getting familiar with technology or at least have someone that's a part of your team or that's helping you that is familiar with technology because this is a very important part of the process. We will also need to be able to verify that our gross receipts have been down by 25% comparing one quarter in 2020 to another quarter in 2019. So the same quarter uh, to be specific. and. This is important because it's uh, not necessarily the profit. I've had a couple of questions from some clients asking if it's the profit, but really there's a difference between revenue and profit. Revenue is at the top of the line, meaning it's literally just what you received. At, that would be considered sales. So everything that was sales, you're comparing quarter one 2020 and quarter one 2019 in just sales. So you're not counting the expenses. It's not the profit after the expenses are, are included in that number, just sales. Um, and then finally, you have to have a majority ownership that is permanent resident or a citizen. This is important to know because in our community, we've gotten a lot of questions on citizenship. If you have an ITIN, um, unfortunately, you cannot apply. But because it's a company, if you have members that have social securities, um, you can and if, and if they hold the majority of the ownership, you can use that to apply as well. Unfortunately, this is uh, federally mandated and federal law is a little bit more strict on citizenship. So it's a little harder to apply. But knowing that, knowing all of these and a couple more rules, if you qualify, you can go ahead and use the PPP should you be accepted. So once you've received the PPP funds, again, you're going to need to be really organized. Uh, having software like, like QuickBooks or using software like Excel to manage your transactions and make sure that you're recording everything that's happening in the business is really, really important for the forgiveness aspect as well because you're going to be proving what you've used the, the funds for. So 
the PPP funds have to be used directly on payroll and operating costs. So this is pretty much going to be the day-to-day -day expenses, everything that you do on a daily basis or a weekly basis to keep the business afloat. So this includes, again, payroll, paying your employees, cost of goods sold, meaning the products that you might purchase to resell or the materials that you buy to create the product that you're selling, um, utility expenses, so Comet, gas, et cetera, and other operating expenses, so like supplies and materials for the office, um, et cetera. So you don't want to go out and expand your business or, or buy a, a giant new piece of equipment. The SBA really wants to see that you're spending this on payroll in the majority. So going on to forgiveness, when the SBA starts looking at your case, um, we can see that you need to spend at least 60% of the funding on payroll. Um, in order to do so, you have to be tracking the amounts, you have to be tracking the transactions in order to make those calculations. And um, if you have any questions on this part, or if you feel like this is becoming um, an overwhelming process while you're managing those transactions, uh, our team at the IHCC can help you with that as well. Like I have a specialization in accounting and uh, we help a lot of our clients manage their business, um, have some guidance on their business so that they can report these numbers to the SBA. Um, so for the rest of the fund, if you, for instance, cut it at 60% and you wanna use the rest of that 40% on, um, on the other operating expenses, there's uh, forgiveness for aspects like interest of mortgage, the rent on uh, the place you're renting, or utilities again. So these are some of the like verified expenses that you can use the SBA for that you wouldn't need to pay the SBA back on. So that's why it's forgiven. So you would also need to use the funds within the required time period. When you become accepted or when you receive the PPP funding, you're gonna have a time period in which you can use all of this. Because most of it is gonna go to payroll, they're pretty much creating a schedule of, of how much of this fund is gonna to go towards payroll. So you wanna be using that on a consistent basis because they wanna basically keep your employees afloat. And you wanna keep staff and wage numbers. So the number of staff and the amount of wages, like in, for instance, hourly wages um, within 25%. So you don't wanna make it go lower than 25% of the total amount that you're paying um, or like the average amount that you're paying, or you don't want to go less than 25% down in staff um, because this will also disqualify you from parts of the forgiveness and you will have to pay back some of those funds. So with that, that's pretty much a quick rundown on the basics of the PPP. Uh, I see we have a bunch of questions in the chat, which is great. So we have a lot of time for questions. Um, so we can go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining back in, Rudy. So we have Juan Carlos Hernandez saying, I, I have a, is regarding business structure. Mine is an LLC partnership and they don't take salary in the form of W-9 or 1099. Um, so Rudy, do you have any guidance on this one? If not, I can take it. Essentially he has, he does not have uh, payroll information in the way that the SBA is asking for. I mean, I mean, um... The what I mean, some of you could probably answer this one better than I can, but I mean, he, he's gonna have to talk to a lender. But my based on my knowledge, the SBA won't take this for not for a PPP loan. The yeah. uh, individual contractor who's got the 1099 would have to apply on themselves, right? Yeah, exactly. So, because you're a 1099, Juan Carlos, you're essentially the owner of your own business. Um, so I think you can still try and talk to a banker, um, about this because. But again, yeah, the 1099 is not going to be, you're not paying payroll taxes. You're not, you're not necessarily like on a payroll schedule. So you're going to have a harder time applying than someone who has that payroll information. Um, again, I would talk to a banker just to make sure, but I think, um, I think essentially you would uh, hit a dead end without that, without that payroll report. And your second question is, can I take a PPP loan for paying contractors to be hired? Yes, you can use PPP for contracts uh, for 1099s as well. Um, but again, the majority of it needs to go towards W-2 employees that are on payroll. Okay. 
So we have Julio Gomez. Yeah, no problem, Juan Carlos. Julio Gomez asking, mi compañía es muy pequeña y fue afectada por la pandemia. Lo malo es que no tengo nómina, solo somos cinco empleados que puedo hacer. Ok, no hay algún otro problema. Ok. So, here, hmm. one second. Sorry, I got a little mixed up here. Okay. So if you don't, si no tienes nómina, si no tienes la información de payroll, otra vez no vas a poder empezar, no vas a poder aplicar con, con tan éxito porque vas a necesitar probar y mostrar que tienes esa información de payroll eh, sobre el, cualquier manera que puedes hacerlo, si, si lo puedes hacer en Excel, si lo puedes como poner en papel, así está bien, pero necesitas esos datos, necesitas esa información porque lo, lo necesitas mostrar. Um, ya vamos a hablar un poco más en español, gracias. Um, y Jaime is asking, my wife opened a business in September 2020, can she apply for PPP? Um, sí, si sí puedes aplicar por el PPP, si sí, abriste en February 15th, 2020, febrero eh, of 2020, puedes aplicar. Anything before or anything after that, si sí, abriste tu negocio después de esa fecha, no puedes aplicar por PPP. Um, ok, y Héctor, he has an S Corp with 1099 employees. Um, I pay myself with a K-1, do not file a Schedule C. So with the S-Corp, you will be able to apply and you will be able to receive funding based on the amount of employees again. So the amount that's on payroll, as an S-Corp, you might be on payroll as, an as the owner of this business. So you can definitely apply with that information um, again you, if you have that payroll if you have those payroll numbers. So the quarters, Connie, are from, there are four quarters in the year, in a fiscal year or calendar year. And um, they go from January to March. So every three months, essentially, January to March, um, April, June, et cetera. And you're going to be comparing one quarter in 2020 to another quarter in 2019 and that is going to be how you show that you've lost revenue and that you need this funding. That's essentially what the SBA is looking for. And then we have David Gloria uh, asking, are seasonal businesses able to still apply and use the PPP funds in the specified times? Uh, yes, you can still apply for the PPP if you're a seasonal business. Again, as long as you have the right information um, and you qualify, you will be able to. And um, I don't think there will be any issues in your case, uh, as long as, again, you met the qualifications that we went through earlier. Um, no creo que sería una problema. And Connie, the quarters, uh, they are up to you. They kind of guide you through uh, quarter one versus quarter one in 2019 and 2020, but you can choose a different quarter to compare if it makes you qualify, which is one of the good things about this PPP loan. So you can choose quarter two as the alternative period as well. And Gloria is asking, are the quarters that we will be comparing? Yes, exactly. So you're comparing the quarters between different years. Uh, but in this case, it would be 2020 to 2019 uh, because we have not finished the quarter for 2021 yet. So we cannot use that as a comparison. And tenemos otros preguntas in the Q&A. Thank you for all of these in the chat so far. 
So can I use the PPP loan to start a business? Um, that's from Trainik E. So see, so if you are starting a business now, again, the, the main minimum date is February 15th in Febrero de este año. If you're starting a, a different, um, if you're starting the business after that, you cannot apply, unfortunately. So would dreamers qualify for PPPs? Um, I don't, this one is a little complicated, actually. I don't quite know. Um, this is going to be something that you might want to talk to your bank representative about and just ask. But if you're a permanent resident or if you have the social security number attached to your, um, to your person or if you have it as a part of the business, even if you don't, you could still apply. But this is a, a very unique situation. Thank you. Okay. We have another one from Sterling Burnett. My phone cut out and I missed a portion of the video. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be uploading, uh, the video is being recorded on the cloud at the moment and we'll be recording it and sending it out to everyone. Um, si perdiste este webinar, si estabas como tomando café o algo así, vamos a mandar un, un recording, uh, una copia, oh, yeah. uh, después de esta llamada. And uh, Mike's asking, that he has a restaurant and received the first PPP loan. Because of COVID, he could not operate the full business in 2020. So I was not able to spend all of my first PPP loan and have to return some. Can I apply for a second draw PPP loan? One of the criteria for a second draw says you must have spent the full amount. Yeah, you're right. That's a really good question, really unique question. This is again, something that is gonna be so unique that you're gonna need to have a detailed conversation with the bank representative that you got the first loan from, but there are some leniencies and there are some clauses that benefit the rest, like restaurants that have been closed down because of COVID during certain periods of time. So if that was a mandate that you had to close down from, um, like because the state said so, or because the city said so, you could still apply, um, you could still try to apply and try and see if you could fit that in because there are definitely some benefits for you. So I would say go back to the bank representative, have a conversation and try and figure out how you can do the second draw because um, you could you could still do it if, if, um, if, they, if they say so. Okay, Elizabeth is asking, los negocios que pagamos en efectivo podemos aplicar a los trabajadores de los lemos 10, 99. Again, because a 1099, otro, otra vez porque el 1099 no es un empleado, no es un W-2, no podemos usarlo como payroll. Es más un expense eh, de, del, del negocio es de un payroll. Entonces, si no tienes algún dato de, de payroll, no creo que lo vas a poder usar para, para este PPP. Y Esteban, eh, ¿no es correcto que el, el empleado que tiene el 1099 puede aplicar para un PPP? Sí, porque es, sí, eh, exacto, porque es un, eh, los empleados que son 1099 son también eh, dueños de, de su propio negocio, son dueños de su nombre. Y entonces ellos pueden, pueden aplicar por, por el PPP porque, porque en en el perspectivo del, del Estado, tienen un negocio, si tienen un 1099. Entonces, sí, ellos pueden aplicar, pero no, no puedes aplicar si solo eres un negocio que, tienes, que, que tiene 1099. No va como a agregar a ese, a ese fondo. Ok. Thanks, Rudy, for that. Thanks for the catch. Um, anonymous attendee is asking, my company is only me, one employee, can I qualify? Yep, you can still qualify if you're only one employee, if you're only yourself. Again, you just need to have that information ready, have those transactions ready, um, and go to a bank representative and um, with all of your business information. Si solo eres el único empleado en su negocio, también puedes aplicar si tienes esa información, si tienes la información del, um, del payroll que tienes para usted. So what is the process time for funding a PPP loan and what is the timeline to use all the funds? So Rudy, I think you can handle the time, the processing yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, um, and I'll, I'll repeat it in Spanish because I know there's some people here who want the information in Spanish. So uh, under the first round, if the application was complete and all documents were uploaded, 
um, you know, the review process, it, the process is, is the onboarding information, processing, which is kind of a QC check, making sure that all documents and the loan amount are correct based on your payroll. Uh, and then it, it, the underwriter just does a quick review uh, based on SBA guidelines. So it, it, in average, it takes about seven to 10 business days if everything is complete. I've seen some close sooner. Uh, if all the documents are uh, uploaded complete and everything matches, uh, so yeah, so it's about between seven to 10 business days. Eh, lo que decía eh, ahorita en español es que el, el tiempo del momento en que uno mete toda su documentación, asumiendo que todo está correcto, que el monto del préstamo que están pidiendo está basado correctamente en su nómina, eh, se están tardando aproximadamente entre 7 a 10 días. Eh, como dije anteriormente, estamos usando tecnología mucho más ahora para los préstamos de PPP. Um, así es que... Um, Esperemos que todo sea un poco más rápido en esta, esta tercera onda ¿verdad? de PPP. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, and the timeline to use all those funds, I believe, let me make a quick search. It's 24 weeks. Um, make sure I have that. But I believe, yeah, it is uh, 24 weeks. Actually, I have some IHCC members in the chat. Could you help me out with this one real quick, just to make sure I have the right timeline? Um, but you have a specific time to use all of the, the funding for payroll and specific purposes. Um, and that is after you receive the funds, not after you apply. And let's see, let's keep going down. So we have some follow-ups in the chat from some questions answered earlier. So I'm gonna go back to that. Um, so if we open 9, 2019, and we have to compare to September 9, 2020. Yeah, so you essentially you would be comparing either the, you would, I think you would only have a uh, quarter four full. So you could use quarter four, Connie, um, to compare um, and potentially parts of quarter three, if they ask for it. Um, can you talk about the rules for forgiveness when you are applying for the PPP and have yet, not yet filed an application for forgiveness of the first loan? Oh, this is interesting. So as long as you use the funds fully, I think, again, this is gonna be um, a question for the bank representative for like the timing of it. You should be applying for forgiveness as soon as you can, um, maybe at the same time that you're applying for the second draw. But as long as you've used all the funds, um, you should be able to um, at least still start the process for application. I don't know, Rudy, if you have some additional information. I, I would just add that most banks are being very proactive forgiveness. So I, I, I don't want to throw a blank on that statement, but most banks are being proactive and are, you know, circling back with the PPP borrowers uh, to initiate the forgiveness process. Perfect. Okay. If I was to flip my LLC to an S corp to start giving me a W-2 or 1099, yeah, you could. Um, so if you've already done that, you can use that information, the W-2 information. But if you started to do that right now, it wouldn't work as well. You wouldn't have that because they're using information from the past to justify the funds that they're giving you. So it's exclusive or it's not exclusive, but it's primarily payroll information that they're using to, to then base that amount on. The total amount that you're gonna get from PPP is 2.5 um, times the month average monthly payroll cost of your business. 3.5 if you're a restaurant or accommodation service, but essentially if you can show that you've paid this certain amount in payroll every month, they're gonna multiply that by 2.5 to give you your loan amount. The maximum loan amount, because I saw someone, I think Francine Hurt asked, what's the most one can borrow? The maximum is 2 million. But again, it's going to be primarily based on the payroll information that you can show based on a monthly average. And you can calculate that by uh, totaling the year of total payroll that you've uh, sent out, not including 1099 expenses. Divide that by 12, and then there's your monthly. Um, okay, so Hector Perez 
So does the banker determine your eligibility and can different bankers determine differently? No. So the bankers are, and Rudy, you can take this too, um, but I think the bankers are pretty much following SBA guidelines for eligibility and then the SBA processes and, and, and approves. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, there, it, it's, it's, the loan amount is based on your payroll or whatever you have documented. So there's the, I mean, if different banks are giving you different numbers because they're interpreting the SBA guidelines differently, but they shouldn't. There should be one number. And uh, thanks. From an earlier uh, from an earlier question on the total period that you can use the funds, uh, we got a confirmation from Melissa and a couple of team members. Thank you. Uh, that it is 24 weeks. So you have 24 weeks to use the total PPP funds um, on payroll and other expenses. Thank you for that, Melissa. Okay, so Francine's asking, what is the process time for PPP? I think we answered that. Um, yeah. So. Again, Rudy, I don't know if you want to say that one again real quick. Yeah, I mean, again, we're leveraging technology right now as much as we can. So uh, it, as long as you upload all the proper documents and follow the checklist that most banks have on, on their online portals, it's usually about seven to 10 business days for, for applications of funding. The delay might be if you're missing a document, they have to go back and forth. But. Perfect. Do I have to apply for 2020 taxes in order to apply? You don't need to have already paid 2020 taxes, um, but you should definitely uh, file as soon as you can just to make the process go as smoothly as possible. But I haven't heard that uh, as a as a uh, obstacle to people who are currently applying. Um, potentially, if you if you haven't applied, if you haven't filed previous years like 2018 and 2017, that could be be an even bigger problem. Um, but 2020 was I haven't heard that as an obstacle yet. Okay, Francine's asking, what's the deadline to report the first PPP loan to request forgiveness? So if you, is this, um, if you had a first draw earlier or is this about the current deadline, Francine? Just um, if you wanna follow up real quick. Is there a minimum credit score required in order to apply? Um, Rudy, I don't know if you know this one. I don't believe there's a credit score minimum. No. There are on, for instance, the 7A, the other SBA loans, um, the normal ones but not for the PPP. There's no minimum credit score. That's correct. This is not credit driven. It's just based on your, on your uh, payroll. Right, perfect. And okay. I think it's just worth mentioning too, Stefan, that for um, if the funds are not deployed, it turns into a five-year 1% loan, correct? I'm sorry? If the funds don't get used for payroll or what the SBA intends them to do, it, this turns into a 1% five-year exactly. term. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a really important point. So yeah, it's whatever is not forgiven um, because parts of the loan can be forgiven and some others not. So if, you've, if you do not meet those qualifications for forgiveness, you could still have some of it be forgiven, but yeah, the, the less used on payroll and the less used on operating expenses, the less will be forgiven and will be a 1% loan. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Francine, okay, to clarify, the first draw was in 2020. What's the deadline to request forgiveness? I don't have that information on me at the moment. Um, if my IHCC team can help me out in the chat, that'd be awesome. Um, but if not, you can contact us uh, we can get that question answered, just so I'm not Googling at the moment. Um, thanks, Francine. So Johnny's asking, I have been in business for 10 years, three quarters of 2019. I put the business on hold. Can I still apply? Uh, yeah, you can use the quarter that you didn't, um, that you didn't um, put the business on hold in 2019. Unfortunately, it's going to look like you made money if you ramped your business up in 2020 um, and you don't have any data in 2019. So it's gonna look like you actually improved in the pandemic, which might not be totally accurate. Um, so hopefully that, that quarter that you do have shows enough information to show that you lost 25% in revenue. That will be the qualifying factor here. Okay, let's go back to the chat. Can you talk about the rules? Okay, we got that one. Thank you, Sylvia, for clarifying the 1099. OK. 
Okay. So we're going to answer um, one or two more questions, and then we're going to start wrapping up. Uh, thank you, everyone, who has given an answer or a, a question so far. <laughs> there's a lot of questions here. So, um, and if there's anything that we don't answer, um, we could always follow up. I'm going to leave our information here. So we have Rudy's um, self-help federal credit union link here. This is a shortened link that you can copy into your, your into your URL now. If not. Um, we will also send this presentation and the recording to everyone who's apply, uh, who's registered to the event. Vamos a mandar un copia de este webinar y toda la información que ves aquí uh, después de la llamada también. Entonces, si perdes algo, no te preocupes. Um, and if you have any questions that are really specific, something that we didn't answer here or didn't have exactly all of the information for, you could also speak with us if um, you haven't reached a bank representative yet. Um, si tienes una duda o cualquier pregunta que era como tan específico que no pudimos uh, uh, responder ahorita, pueden, puedes um, contactarnos a I, info at ihcbusiness.net o puedes llamar ese número abajo, 312-425-9500. Um, and you can set up an, a meeting with someone like me, and we have also many experts at the IHCC that are willing to help as well, free of charge. Um, so one or two more questions. Uh, does employee insurance by Hector, union dues, or other related employee expense count towards employee payment? Yes, employee employee um, insurance, and I'm not sure about union dues. That's a very unique uh, expense, but any th most expenses that have to do with the PPP uh, payroll, or the most expenses that have to do with payroll in general business are uh, contributed to payroll expense and will be forgiven if you use that for that. Um, Para los que no calificamos para el programa PPP, ¿hay algún otro programa el cual podamos aplicar? Ya, yeah, um, esta es una pregunta que podemos terminar porque es una buena pregunta para terminar. Uh, si no aplicas para el PPP, también hay otras opciones. El SBA solo tiene, oh, el SBA tiene también dos otras opciones que puedes aplicar. Hay un préstamo normal que se llama el SBA 7A en que puedes aplicar también, pero sí, si, y también hay el EIDL loan, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, para que puedas aplicar por eso también, pero si no calificas para el PPP, tal vez no vas a aplicar para este también, pero no te preocupes, no, no, um, there isn't a harm, no hay, no hay como un harm en, 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 en probarlo, en aplicar por ellos. Um, pero sí, hay el EIDL y también el 7A. Uh, to set up a business advising, thank you, Yvette, for plugging the IHCC. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being a part of this uh, webinar today. I know the PPP still has a lot of unanswered questions, um, and it's still a very confusing process. Hopefully, ojalá que este webinar um, era un poco, that it helped you a little bit because um, this is still a very confusing process and there's a lot of questions to be answered. So if you still have a question, si todavía tienes una pregunta otra vez, puedes contact, contactarnos at the IHCC. Aquí está nuestra email y nuestro número. Um, Rudy, you can contact Rudy here at the application link. Uh, we will ha they have bank representatives willing to help um, all of our small businesses here. Um, Rudy, I don't know if you have any finishing thoughts. You know, I'll just, I just want to encourage everybody again to apply. Uh, if you have any doubts, if you qualify, um, you know, call, make a call to one of your local chamber of commerce. IHCC is a great resource and great partners and very knowledgeable folks, as you all heard Esteban go through this presentation. Uh, under the first wave, I talked to a lot of small businesses who were not going to apply because A, either they just didn't know if they, if they uh, were eligible or not. Um, so, you know, we were able to, you know, reach out to, to some of those, these small businesses and had them apply. But, you know, again, I just want to encourage everybody, please, you know, apply. If you have any doubts, reach out to your local chambers or support centers. Perfect. Okay. 
thank you everyone again for being uh, for being here on a Saturday morning. Uh, again, any questions, feel free to contact us. We're here to help you at no charge. También hablamos español. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone. You'll all receive a recording later. Bye.